there was a signal in, I think it was 1978, the, called the wow signal, because that's what they... Yeah, 77. 1977, yeah, 77, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, first of all, there was a signal that we received, and it was... And then it just went away, and we never received it again. And so that's almost 50 years ago. What was special, first of all, about that signal? And then why is it that you think uh, that might have come from 3i Atlas? It was uh, by um, an observatory uh, that is called the Big Ear of uh, Ohio State University. And uh, it was uh, so strong that the person who first noticed it uh, wrote wow in the uh, lab notes uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's called the, the wow signal and definitely came from outside of this earth it was extraterrestrial and uh, its origin was never understood and uh, there was a suspicion maybe it came from some other civilization uh it's uh, very close in frequency to uh, a transition of hydrogen that uh, is often observed in astronomy but it, it came from an object that is moving uh, towards the sun, and um, hmm. and I checked actually just uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it originated from a, a direction in the sky that is very close to where Three I Atlas came from, within nine degrees, and the chance of such a coincidence is zero point six percent, and so maybe wow. it was related. Wow. Maybe it came hmm. from Three Atlas. Maybe it was sent to Three Atlas by some other, you know, from the sender of 3i Atlas. Uh, at any event, 3i Atlas is really strange in other ways. It's, uh, uh, aside from its, uh, the fact that it's so massive, it's in the plane of the planet, it also has some unusual composition. We, we see gas around it, and it contains um, much more nickel than, than iron, and as we find in industrial production of nickel alloys, there was a jet that uh, in the Hubble Space Telescope image of 3 Atlas, which was our best so far, uh, there was a, a jet of scattered sunlight that was 10 times longer than it is wide, pointing towards the sun. And that's very different Weird. from comets, where Weird. usually you Going see away. a tail of yeah. dust that is pushed away, blown away from the sun, yes. And, um, you know, so... In addition, the arrival time of 3 Atlas was optimized to pass very close to Mars. That happened on October 3rd. And then it will pass uh, very close to Jupiter on March, uh, 20, uh, March 16th, uh, 2026. So altogether, this is a, a strange object. And my point is, you know, let's just make sure that it's a rock and not something else. Um, and, uh, you know, it opens a, a new uh, frontier now because... There is the Rubin Observatory in Chile that was funded by the Department of Energy, the National Science Foundation, that will discover an interstellar object every few months in the next decade. And we better check if each and every one of those uh, is a natural object and not uh, a tennis ball that was thrown by a neighbor. Right. Uh, Professor, uh, at... At, uh, I guess I was looking online here, and uh, at, I guess medium.com, uh, a lot of your stuff is posted there, and you posted the, um, the images from the European uh, Space Agency. Have we received, or is, is the government shutdown being used as the reason why we're not getting the NASA images, or am, have I just missed those? Yeah, so, uh, by the way, I'm really surprised that my essays on Medium.com receive uh, a readership of a few million people every month, which is, uh, mm-hmm. uh, sound, it sounds crazy because I'm not writing a tweet, you know, I'm writing <laughs> essays that take uh, five to ten minutes for people to read. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yes, yeah, so, um, uh, we, the best is yet to come because NASA has a camera called HiRISE that is much better than the European camera. Uh, in, uh, around Mars, and and NASA's camera, HiRISE, uh, is capable of resolving uh, three I Atlas with 30 kilometers per pixel when it came closest to Mars, and they took uh, the data. We know that on October 2nd, and uh, the claim is because of the government shutdown, <laughs> NASA is unable to communicate the results to the oh, public. Yeah. Now, uh, some some people suspected maybe it's. Uh, Uh, conspiracy. Maybe there is information that NASA doesn't want us to know. Mm. And uh, I try to argue that 
you know, it's probably not uh, a signature of extraterrestrial intelligence. It's more likely to be terrestrial stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> it would be fun, though, if it is extraterrestrial. Wouldn't it It'd be, I mean, you, you've been oh, yeah. advocating for, um, for us to have, like, craft in space to prepare for something like this, right? That you would like to yes, visit uh, an object like this. I think, yeah, I think it would be really a great opportunity for us to learn what comes from outside the solar system. Uh, you know, in the past, astronomers used telescopes to look far away. And in fact, the astronomers uh, decided that the next priority would be to build a space observatory at a cost of more than $10 billion that would look at the atmospheres of planets uh, around other stars far away uh, to figure out if there are any uh, molecules that were produced life by life, yeah. uh, by microbes. Mm -hmm. But uh, my point is, you know, if an object comes from another star and took it millions to billions of years to get to our backyard, you know, it, it saves us a, a lot of time. It already bridged the gap between those distant stars and us, and we have it next to us. And if we were to, uh, to go there to one of these objects and collect some materials, we can check, for example, the building blocks of life around other stars. 